Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Variance Soft Shadows. Now, in the last video, we talked about another way you can achieve Soft Shadows, called PCF Soft Shadows, and they produce some fairly nice looking Soft Shadows. They're not perfect, but they're definitely acceptable. They look like Soft Shadows. Unfortunately, PCF Soft Shadows have some problems with them. For one, they accentuate all the other issues with basic shadow mapping. For instance, PCF soft shadows, they tend to make issues like shadow acne and peter panning significantly worse than they would be otherwise. And you know, that's not good. It's not nice to have to fight with fixing basic shadow mapping issues and getting good looking soft shadows. Another issue is they really don't perform that great. Even our basic 3x3 PCF soft shadows required 36 texture reads per pixel. And that doesn't include overdraw, so if there's overdraw, we're getting 36 unnecessary texture reads, and that's no good. And worse, that actually just gets even worse when you get even more of them in. And that's not even including the cost of just doing all the summing and doing the linear filtering in the first place. So, yeah, PCF Soft Shadows, not exactly the performance we're going for. So there's a lot of issues with PCF Soft Shadows. They're good because they do produce physically plausible Soft Shadows, but they're not great. It would be nice if there was something better. And that's what Variant Soft Shadows bring us. Unlike PCF Soft Shadows, Variant Soft Shadows don't just try to take your basic shadow mapping data, and work with it and make it better. Various sh soft shadows sort of fundamentally rethink the problem and come up with something new. So I'm going to start by giving a quick refresher on the PCF way of conquering the soft shadow problem. So in PCF, rather than sampling a single value from the shadow map, you'll sample a region of values. In this illustration, I'm using a 5x5 region, but this can be as big or as small as you want. And what you'll do is for each pixel in that region, you'll determine if it's in light or in shadow. And then that'll give you just a basic Boolean value, 0 or 1. Is it in light or is it in shadow? And then you'll sum up all of those and average them, and that's the value for how much of the pixel is in light or in shadow. That's the PCF way of handling it, or at least a quick review of it. If you want more detail, or you know how it works, or why this is a physically plausible way of doing soft shadows, look at the last video. I talked all about the PCF way of conquering soft shadows in that video. Variance shadow maps, however, they try to do sort of the same thing, but they look at the problem differently. They use some information that PCF soft shadows don't. The thing is, a shadow map isn't like my illustration here. A pixel in a shadow map isn't just some binary representation of, oh, this pixel's in light, or this pixel's in shadow. No, it's not like that at all all. One pixel in a shadow map stores how far that pixel is from the light. Okay? So if you want to determine if some point is in light or shadow, you'd see if it's farther than that pixel in the shadow map. Because if it's farther from the light than the distance in the shadow map, then that means there's something blocking that point from the light. There's something in front of it. And that's the way basic shadow mapping works. The thing is, in PCF soft shadows, you're taking that same point, that same distance from the light, and you're comparing it to a whole range of values from the shadow map. And you don't particularly care if 
any one of those points happens to be in light or happens to be in shadow. All you care about is what percentage of those points pass the shadow test and what percentage fail. You see? So what we're really interested in isn't whether or not an individual point is in shadow. What we're interested in is a percentage, a proportion, a statistic. You see where I'm going with this? So the idea of variance shadow maps is that you change the way you're storing the shadow map. You don't just store the distance from the light anymore. Instead, you look at an area, like you would in PCF soft shadows. And what you do is you store the average distance from the light in that area. Okay? So we're not storing the ab any absolutes anymore, we're storing averages. But you also store the depth variance in that area. So we know how much the depth is varying, and we know the average depth. And that allows us to do something like this. So this right here is going to represent one pixel in a variance shadow map. The box here, that's going to represent the average depth, whatever average depth you come up with. And these lines here, that's going to represent the variance, however much that, well, yeah, however much variance there is. Now, keep in mind, variance doesn't define any absolute maximum or minimum value. It just means most values lie within that range. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Now, in most cases, you're going to have something like this, where yeah, you're sampling a point that's either just totally above whatever's stored in the variance shadow map, even including the variance. In which case, that point's completely lit. Or you have a point where which is just totally below whatever's in the variance shadow map, even including the variance. And in that case, it's completely in shadow. So, in situations like that, this works just like a basic shadow map. It's either lit or it's in shadow. Where things get interesting is when you have a situation like this, where you have a point that's either within the variance range or is very close to being within the variance range. Because here's the thing. In statistics, if you know the average value, and you know the variance, then you can calculate the percentage of values which lie above a certain point, and the percentage of values which lie below a certain point. So in this case it might be, I don't know, maybe 20% are above this point, and 80% are below this point. And of course that would mean this point is 20% in shadow, and 80% lit. And if you think about it, that's exactly the same thing that PCF soft shadows are trying to accomplish. They're looking at some range of values, and they're trying to determine the percentage of values which lie above some certain point, and the percentage of values that lie below a certain point. It's just variance shadow mapping is doing it in a little bit of a different way. It's now just directly storing those averages and that variance, so you don't need to go through all the trouble of calculating that manually in the pixel shader. So, that's kind of nice. And yeah, that's, that's the basic idea of variance shadow mapping. So, all that's left is what ridiculous piece of mathematics do you have to do to calculate what percentage is above a certain value and what percentage is below a certain value. And that's coming up right now. So, just to quickly recap what we're trying to calculate here, we have some average, we have some variance, and we're trying to calculate what percentage of values lie above a certain point, and what percentage of values lie below a certain point. And, believe it or not, there's an equation by this famous mathematician whose name I'm going to horrendously butcher. 
I apologize to all my Russian viewers in advance. But it calculates exactly what we're looking for. It's called something along the lines of Chebyshev's inequality. And, like I said, it does exactly what we're looking for. It takes some average, it takes some variance, and it calculates what percentage of values are above a certain point, and what percentage of values are below a certain point. But there's a catch. Come on, you knew it wouldn't be that easy, didn't you? Well, let's just say it's called Chebyshev's inequality for a reason. It doesn't calculate an exact value. It doesn't calculate exactly what percentage of values are above or below it. It just says there's at most this percentage of values above or below it. Fortunately, most of the time that's a really, really, really good approximation of, well, of the values. So, for the most part, we can just calculate that upper bound and use it, and it works beautifully. So yeah, that's how it works. We use Chebyshev's inequality to calculate the maximum percentage, and that's our softness, really. That's that's how much our softness is. And Well, yeah, that's various shadow mapping, folks. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and in the next video, we're going to be actually going into the 3D engine and implementing this. We're going to be stripping out all the PCF stuff and putting in this nice, simple variance shadow mapping code. And yeah, that's what we'll be doing in the next video. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.